Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneur in India's uh, Resilience Series. When we were all locked up at our homes uh, when the uh, COVID-19 pandemic broke out, whatever we needed, groceries, home essentials, medicines, everything was available to us. There were many challenges like a broken supply chain, yet the B2B players ensured supplies were enough. And today, we will look at how things have panned out in this space. I'm Saurav Kumar, editor of Special Projects, Entrepreneur India, the moderator for the session. I'll quickly lay down the ground rules uh, for our attendees. Uh, the discussion will go on for 30 minutes. And we will take up uh, uh, questions post that. Uh, if you have any questions during specific panelists, then we'll take up the questions post the panel discussion. Let me now introduce our panelists for the day. We have with us today, Mr. Akshay Hegde, uh, co-founder and uh, managing director, Sheikh Zeel, Mr. Samar Sagarwal, CEO and co-founder, uh, Max Wholesale. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. So, you know, let me start with the very basic. So it's been around six, seven months, eight months that, uh, you know, we have been locked up. So how was it initially? What did you do to overcome the challenges and how has it progressed from there till now? Uh, Akshay, if, if I can start with you. Sure. Firstly, thanks for having me. Sort of a uh, pleasure to be here uh, and talk to you, you know, your audience. Uh, firstly, it was a shock, you know, uh, though we came in like uh, we, we kind of locked out. We went into our own self-imposed, uh, I guess, work from home before the nation actually locked down. Uh, maybe a week before the nation lockdown, uh, but it was still, you know, pretty uh, uh, scary because it, though, so it, it so happened that, you know, when China was in its peak of lockdown, Shekil was trying to uh, fulfill orders for China. They were in need of PPE equipment. So we were sending, you know, thermometers and uh, infrared thermometers, heat guns and whatnot from here all the way to China. And we thought, you know, maybe it's just going to douse but then came March and so on. And then there was a, a large scale lockdown in India as well. And then you saw disruption across because of, you know, shutdowns, lockdown, uh, factories not being allowed to operate except for, you know, necessary or, you know, what is known as essential items. So it was definitely a shock for us. What we did to go about it is firstly, I, I feel like uh, some of the things that were required at, peak, at, at the peak of the lockdown was like, you know, a huge amount of PPE that India kind of lacked. So what we did is we focused on, you know, ramping up our PPE uh, supply. And we did that by, you know, uh, tapping onto all of these textile, medical textile research uh, manufacturers who uh, have the ability to ramp up because they have installed capacity, but they didn't probably deal with this because the demand was never this. So the demand we saw for this particular category was like, you know, 10x in, in this uh, lockdown period. And uh, based on that, uh, a lot of these companies that we were supplying to, right, uh, initially, where they really wanted to uh, protect their entire staff, keep, keep, in, uh, you know, keep the factories running if they were uh, able to, uh, you know, keep running, they would have prefer to keep running because otherwise uh, no revenues makes it very difficult for any company to sustain. Uh, they reached out to us and, you know, we, we tried to manage their fulfill and fulfill their, you know, PPE orders. So it, it was a big challenge. A lot of the lockdown made uh, transportation uh, one of the, you know, challenges because when we move stuff from say middle center of India to here or from north to south, it was a big challenge because they had uh, perimeters set up and states were not allowing uh, transport within our to intersect, you know. So mm. that, that brought on challenges. So we had to also make it in a way that, you know, our supply chains were localized, wherein sourcing and supply were happening within the same region. So that, you know, with these, uh, you wrote, the permits, the e-permits that were being available, we were able to still manage supply. Okay. So that's how we went about, you know, still catering to the demand but on the work front i guess you know we were able to like uh, use most of these tools that we have to digitally connect with our employees i think before the call even samarth was mentioning that they had almost all the 
processes in place so that they could like monitor most of these metrics that they were doing. And because uh, everything is tracked in the system, uh, now these guys had to like almost, uh, it, it was even easier to monitor the metrics rather than just having it set in, in the air and you know, it was not monitored. So that was kind of a uh, similar scene with us as well. How much? If how how was how was it with you? Hi, thank you, Zorab. Uh, so yeah, uh, would quickly like to introduce. Uh, I'm the founder of Max Holes. Yeah. yeah. Am I audible to everybody? Yes, sir. Please. Yeah, I'm the founder and CEO of Max Wholesale. Max Wholesale is a app which connects uh, Kirana stores with manufacturers of FMCG or grocery products. So we, we are a full stack company and we provide logistics, we provide warehousing and we provide technology to brand manufacturers. We work with large companies like Unilever, Procter & Gamble, Imami, Godrej, Dagar, and we also work with some local manufacturers. Currently we are in Delhi and Chandigarh and we work with local manufacturers of Delhi and Chandigarh to provide their products to Kirana stores. Uh, when the lockdown happened, uh, unfortunate event for the country, but uh, it has been sort of a growth lever for Max Wholesale. So I would quickly talk about that. What happened during the lockdown was that most of the FMCG companies or FMCG brands found it impossible to send their sales team to the market to collect orders. And what that meant was that the sales team, because the sales team cannot be in the market during the lockdown, even if the brand is manufacturing its products, they couldn't provide those products to the retailers. They simply didn't know how many products to be sent to which retailer at what time, when would the retailer be open? And it was the most opportune time for Max because our application was present with the retailers in their mobile phones. Retailers could simply log into their app and place an order. And we being an organized grocery player, we had the, the, the passes given to us by the government as an essential services provider. And we were allowed to deliver to the Kirana stores with our vehicles and our people were allowed to come to the warehouse to work. So that was the opportunity. We were all of a sudden overnight. So the lockdown was announced on the 22nd, I think. And uh, overnight, what we saw was that three days worth of orders, the, the number of orders, the amount of volume of orders we would see in three days would come to us in one day, right? And the number of employees that were able to come to, the, come to work, come to warehouse, reduced by one third. So now each person, while we have three times the work, we had one third the people to work with. So everyone had to do almost nine times the work to get the orders shipped, to get them packed, to get them delivered, and no, less vehicles, less people, more orders coming in. We literally had to shut down our server for some time for orders to stop coming. First process the orders that we have already got, and then restart the server, send the messages to retailers. We are back on, collect more orders, shut the server down for a few hours, deliver those orders, then bring the server back up. And that's how we were operating for a few days till we rebuilt our team in Delhi. And very weird things that our team faced was they were not able to get public transport to come from work to office. So we had to increase our vehicles to pick up our people to be able, for them to be able to come to work. Then comes the night. They have worked all day long, maintaining social distancing, wearing PPEs and everything. And at night, there is a big task of somehow making them go back home, enabling them to reach home and have their dinner and get ready for the next day. So then we had to make a buddy program where our delivery boys who were delivering products during the day would pick people in the morning, do the deliveries during the day and bring the staff back home by night. So that's one thing that we did for our people. Another fascinating thing was People who were living on rent, they were not allowed to come to work by the landlords because the scare was that they will bring coronavirus with them to their homes, to the families who are living nearby. 
so what we as a company had to do was within a week we had to find out a lot of apartments near our warehouse where our employees could stay temporarily and and work so we got um, we got we, we we there was a village near our warehouse where we knew the owner of the village the, the main guy and he he really enabled us to find a, a a place where a few people could stay and then another place and that's how we solved staying problems for our employees the third big problem was of you know parents not ask, not allowing their, their 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 children to go to work so then we had to incentivize with more uh, bonuses given for hardship they are going through so we increased the salary by 50% for the first two months of lockdown and that that's when the people started coming back in so we had to do a lot of these small small hacks to get the team back in the demand was going through the roof another problem retailers were not allowed to open the store for the entire day so we didn't know at what time will the retailer be open when we are going with our delivery whether we will be able to make the delivery or not there again retailers and their neighbors came to the rescue where retailer will tell our delivery person that this particular neighbor will accept my delivery and he'll make the payment and we were then making deliveries to different places where the retailer could later on come and pick up his products the shelves of retailers were like literally empty anything or everything they could get on our app was just flying off the shelf from our app and going to the retailer shelf and funny enough some of the largest brands of our country were unable to provide supply uh, brands that were dependent on interstate trucking found it the toughest to make their products available and that's where the we saw lot of energy and innovation from local manufacturers who were ready to take the opportunity to get more consumers interact with their brands make their brands available to retailers so we we saw a lot of opportunity during the corona time where people who just never wanted to give up actually found innovative solutions to reach their consumers and build a communication what really came to everyone's rescue was this communication methodology that we had built using max wholesale where retailers don't need a sales person to visit them they can just open the app see the products place an order delivery boys don't need to know what is ready to be shipped what is not ready to ship delivery boys could just open their own app could see what is the work for them take that into the vehicle from a particular place and just leave nobody in our company needed to talk to each other because of which the social distancing we were able to manage because everyone in the company was working on his own dedicated app where work will come they know where to get the particular product or a particular box to be shipped and they are all working like you know uh, in a very like a like an orchestra where everyone is just you know playing his own instrument but what you hear is music that's how the company was running like an orchestra every employee working on his own beat working on his own app working on his own you know a task and as a result we grew multiple times uh, today we are doing about so to, we have grown about 12x in the last 10 months uh, so i think i think that's the main takeaway from this whole uh, corona story that we saw was that if you are not willing to give up then every hurdle that you see actually becomes an opportunity and technology becomes a big enabler in capitalizing on that opportunity okay okay so uh, you know uh, akshay i'll come to you so in hindsight if you now think that okay we faced it we were not ready for it we managed the challenge somehow but in hindsight if you think that okay these were the things that were already in the pipeline and could have been done and which would have helped you today were, were things that we could have been done to be ready for such a scenario or we are doing right now so that in future in case there is anything like this happens we'll be much better prepared well uh they, they like there were a lot of uh, new technology uh you know we were working on new technologies that we were working on so a couple of them were like you know our runner apps right so we are uh we do have uh, a concept of cloud fulfillment centers and we've got a concept of edge fulfillment centers 
edge fulfillment centers are kind of like very closely located to our uh, enterprise customers. They particularly fulfill for our enterprise customers. And then we've got a concept of cloud fulfillment centers, which basically uh, caters to a host of customers and they're strategically located close to our vendor clusters. So that's where we usually consolidate and so on. And, and then, you know, ship out the products depending upon the, the POs that we get. Uh, what happens is, uh, so while the edge fulfillment centers is captive, so it's, it's, it's always running smoothly as long as the factories are enabling shipments to come in and come up, you know, leave. Uh, the cloud fulfillment centers had a lot of, uh, you know, shipments to in inward, consolidate and so on. And there were a lot of vendors that faced the same issues during lockdown because they were not dealing with uh, necessarily essential products, but at the same time, you know, there, there's a, say, there's a PO that has eight essential items out of which two are non-essential, but the PO needs to be fulfilled in full. So by, by that definition, you know, we had to source, uh, say, those two line items from a different vendor. And when that happened, um, what came into, um, you know, focus or, you know, it, it kind of, uh, uh, it stood out was that, you know, uh, a need for a runner app. And this runner app was something that, uh, so we call it Flux over here at Shakespeare. It, it kind of enabled uh, not just uh, uh, the runners, but also the, uh, the vendors from where we do the JIT or the just-in-time sourcing uh, to both be on the same platform and communicate with that uh, in a seamless manner, right? Uh, so over and above the WMS that our warehouses use, this kind of runner app would have been something that if it was accelerated or if we had a, you know some sort of know-how that if this is going to hit us at this point in time, uh, it would have been ready and then it would have enabled a lot of this uh, movement without so much of a challenge. What happened during this lockdown is we had to repurpose supply chains such that they were solely sourced in a, within a city and were possibly you know, uh, fulfilled, uh, fulfilled all through, through, the, through the same city because you know, interstate, a inter, lot of times, even Bangalore and borders of Bangalore, Bangalore is very close to you know, uh, Hosur, which is like Tamil Nadu. Bar. We have a lot of customers on the other side of the border. You know? So our, our, our vehicles could not go, go across and that was another challenge, right? So in, in these situations, I felt like uh, this particular thing, had it been you know, uh, advanced a little, maybe timeline moved up, it would have been uh, much more of a beneficial uh, thing for us. Hmm. Okay. Samant, anything you think, uh, you know, you could have done now that, you know, everything's opening up. So obviously we are doing things separately, but uh, was there anything that you had planned, but now, uh, but had not implemented, but now you think that had you implemented that you would have been a better position right now? See, um, India has 1.4 billion people, right? And these 1.4 billion people comprise or constitute 300 million families. And these 300 million families are supported by 13 million Kirana stores, right? That's how India is constructed. And these 13 million Kirana stores have been supplying inventory to the families who, near, who live near the store. So every Kirana store is taking care of roughly 20 families in India, 20, 25 families, right? This supply chain is already built out. This network of Kirana stores is already built out. Earlier, what the market was sort of predicting was that the modern trade will take over the general trade of, of India, which is we will build a new way of reaching to the retailers, to the consumers, to the families, which is direct to consumers through, uh, through uh, direct to consumer apps for grocery. But what actually helped the consumers during the Corona pandemic was the retailers. Those are the guys who actually performed through this, through some resilience of their own of not letting the store shut down, even if there is Corona, they kept on dealing with people, maintaining social distancing and creating new solutions to as to how to run the store. So I think what has happened during the Corona, one big learning is 
that the existing supply chain that india has is the is the more dependable one compared to the new age modern trade direct to home which is obviously seeing growth but is not as dependable as the kirana structure that is already put in place in india one more thing that i have observed in corona is that the entire country has woken up to looking for tools that they can use for their business and how to quickly adapt to le- and learn how to use those tools so that is also happening in the kirana segment where kirana stores are looking for tools with which they can compete with some of the larger direct to home uh, e-commerce providers so kirana stores have now started using those tools where they can become the local e-commerce providers in their neighborhood or they could accept payments through mobile phones without having to meet the customer or they could tie up with a delivery app to make deliveries to home more accessible cheaper more scalable so kirana stores have woken up instead of looking at e-commerce as a challenger or as a competition they have started looking at e-commerce as an enabler and this tradition this trend is not just a tier 1 trend this trend is actually more prevalent in tier 2 and tier 3 towns of india where they have started looking at e-commerce as an enabler for their business so the biggest learning for me is that the plans that we have of providing more technology to the retailers should be accelerated and that's what we have done over the last uh, 10 months during corona so we have uh, we had a plan of launching a b2c app for kirana stores which we had been postponing because we were busy growing our b2b business when the pandemic hit we went ahead doubled down on that app and launched it and we provided that to the kirana stores of delhi it's called radius and a lot of kirana stores quickly took, took to using that app to communicate with their key customers even at night when they are asleep they could take the orders from their customers right and they could provide better service than a large b2c uh, company in that neighborhood give doing deliveries uh, to the to the neighborhoods which the kirana stores have been supporting for so many decades or, or years so uh, that that's one trend that we see that the kirana stores have started adopting to technology payments technology inventory management technology delivery technology order collection technology all of this integration is going on at a very fast pace and we are doubling down on these things Uh, one thing actually i should also add to that is some things which we did not do ended up helping us see through this uh, pandemic which is giving credit to kirana stores uh, earlier like we have always been a company that has always done business on cash on delivery and uh, during the pandemic we saw that the entire credit piece on the market simply evaporated there was moratorium in the country for about 6 months and uh, new lines of credit were not being given kirana stores no supplier was giving credit during the pandemic it was just simply not there was so much of volatility nobody knew whether today i'll give credit whether it will come back to me a month later or a week later or not so that because we didn't have any credit position in the market that kind of protected us from any kinds kind of a credit risk now the time has come for us to provide credit to the kirana stores so we are seeing traction in in that field as well we have started providing credit to kirana stores just this month and we are seeing good growth in that segment as well okay you know you mentioned a very important point and akshay and come to you it, it has strength i would believe and i'm sure that you must have also noticed in terms of how they make payments or how they uh, how they place the orders so what has been your observation in terms of you know the behavior of the uh, merchants on your uh, with whom you have been interacting all the before and after maybe well before corona uh, about 10% of our orders were we, you, they, the retailers were using banking channels to pay us after corona we saw that payment mechanism go up to 40% uh, 40% of orders started being paid by banking channels so uh, the biggest uh, kicker being upi so a lot of retailers have moved to using upi as a payment mechanism even in their b2b transactions so that is one big trend that we see uh, average order sizes have gone up and that has further brought down the cost of uh, online payments for us because traditionally upi systems are micro transaction payment systems 
but what we are seeing on our upi adoption is that uh, the order sizes are growing larger and kirana kirana stores are getting more and more comfortable paying larger amounts using mobile apps and using uh, mobile technology for payments in fact we have also gone ahead and developed our own payment gateway called max pay for our retailers which is a 100% b2b focused upi based payment gateway of india it's the first and only b2b focused payment gateway of india and it's the cheapest payment gateway because of its b2b nature so even if you were to transfer a lakh rupees on our payment gateway it will have a flat fee compared to the other players where the fee is in percentages how has been your experience uh, you know with the merchants So I kind of got Akshay, can you hear me? Cut off over there. Yeah, can you come again? Yes, yeah, so I'm saying that kind of change. Have you noticed? Uh, in... Sure. So, uh, unlike uh, how you know, uh, Samar to saying. the uh, in our space most of the payments have always been digital because we're dealing with large enterprises so they were never really cash cash payments right they were always uh, happening through your nft rtgs and uh, the ones that had their own enterprise portals were uh, already in a, a credit system wherein you know they had a net 30 or n 30 kind of uh, credit period where or 45 depending upon what they had but despite that they were very you know uh they understood the fact that you know these are peak season items it's like uh, not possible to deliver or even source for these items at the drop of a hat uh so they were very you know um understanding in the fact that you know we could not probably extend the same credit terms uh for the for these peak items like the ppes the the sanitizers uh, and so on because it would have put an immense pressure on us as a vendor partner as you know as their supply chain procurement partner and uh, that was hardening obviously because uh the large enterprises are used to credit they used to that credit from uh, different vendors it's that standard terms but what happens is during this period like you know samat mentioned almost all credit was uh, suspended companies vendors they didn't really they they prefer to take any order but with an advance so what happened was shakti also had to like you know uh, either recondition or move to vendors who were still honoring their credit terms and try and fulfill from there so that our cash flow wasn't you know uh, impacted and at the same time um what we saw and we felt was happening was our customers being or uh, at least you know understanding that uh, this is a time when you know uh, it's it's a pandemic uh, it's not going to last forever this is the time to support uh, our vendors but at the same time they are supporting us because what's important is this pandemic has led to a lot of the chief supply chain officers chief procurement officers now saying that you know this is the time to get onto the digital bandwagon we need to digitize our supply chain we cannot be working with you know 3000 vendors we need to like you know aggregate and uh, we need someone who is able to bring in these efficiencies uh, in, improve the productivity and you know uh, make our entire system or supply chain more transparent and that has accelerated since this pandemic and we we're seeing this as a, it's like it's a common a uh, phenomenon across the sector uh, be it, you know automobile be it companies in the you know pharma space they're all getting onto this bandwagon if it all it was already happening earlier because it was a strategic bet that they they had lo- looked at in you know in their uh, in their way of uh, transforming their companies as of now it's definitely a high priority and that has also helped you know for companies like us as we have seen a, a tremendous growth uh, especially in terms of uh, companies that are 
adapting us like earlier it all you all we always had a ramp up period because these are like you know large uh, well oiled machines but at the same time there was a certain inertia to really get say a process or you know uh, and your your entire enterprise solution working such that not just one faction of the company but the entire you know organization as such can start using it uh but that was definitely accelerated and now it's uh it, it it's good because now it's it's all coming top down which which uh leads to rapid transformation rather than happening at uh it happening in you know step jumps that's good that's right so you know in the past 6 7 months under this series is that everyone has shown us some good things that have come out of the covid obviously there have been very bad things that have happened due to covid but every sector has somehow uh, you know learned something gained something so, you know uh, before i take the next question we will uh, i'll request our readers uh, audience to keep their questions come so you know we questions were so uh, one of the question is that um, what the product that uh, uh, the most the basically what what the what means is that uh, post the pandemic was there a, was there a change in the consumption pattern uh, and has it sustained uh, till now has it again gone back to what it was earlier um, akshay kamar anyway. so consumption pattern in the sense like uh, to be honest the during the pandemic the consumption had all shifted to say one vertical for us at least you know and because we we are catering to factories you know and sites and manufacturing uh, facilities and so on so consumption pattern had definitely taken a like oh it was overhauled in a way that you know we ourselves had to dedicate resource and time on to like say one category uh, ramp that up so that you know we could keep supplying this pp and these essentials that are required uh at the same time that slowly started you know uh i guess shifting back to its original nature so the the profile of the customers and the consumers their order profiles started mimicking what it was pre covid uh back in july itself so i would say the last like july which is like uh, the start of the last quarter uh, onwards we have seen pretty much it coming back to you know uh, pre covid times and their order profiles have started mimicking that right now it's definitely like you know uh, whatever it was pre covid but at the same time they have noticed and they as i mentioned earlier this aggressive need to like you know adopt uh, say technology and adopt a, uh, an aggregator like us uh to streamline the supply chain wherein they themselves get freed up uh on the you know uh administrative processes their their time uh the effort they have to put all these latent costs that are hidden in the procure to pay process that has been completely uh you know been put in like overdrive by at least that the management of all of those companies and that has kind of helped us to see like our order profile change in a manner that we are now looking at a larger bucket okay come on uh yeah there were some very Sabar, obvious same question to you yeah yeah there were some very obvious patterns that we saw i think uh, all of you running a family as well must have seen that within your family also at home uh, there was a lot of panic buying in march and april and during the panic buying most of the stuff that people were buying was the must haves for example the pulses the rice the oil and ghee baby food hygiene stuff that people need and you know if the store is closed how will you get that so cleanliness products hygiene products skin care hair care products baby care products and in food mostly commodities then rice and pulses stuff like that very very highly dependable long shelf life uh products then we saw slow movement towards you know little bit of a guilty pleasure like 
all of a sudden you know bakery baking products started seeing an uptick people started baking at home uh, so that happened in july august people started baking at home and uh, they started buying baking powders and stuff like that more sugar and uh, baking soda we saw that happening and now it's come back little bit to normal where we are seeing people buying back similar stuff that they were buying similar time last year the diwali gifting section this time the diwali gift kind of changed because most of the diwali gifts were also people were not really going to the mithai walas as much as they were going to the kirana stores i think that's one trend that we have seen is more move towards packaged goods rather than open items because people trust the hygiene of the packaging in the factory versus packaging at the store so people are gifting more of biscuits and chocolates rather than uh, mithais so that's one shift we saw on diwali a lot of consumption of biscuits bakery biscuits and juices juices is one segment that somehow people believe that it is healthier okay. than other drinks so there is a lot of move towards juices one one item is haldi which has now found its place in almost every one raw material that's new in every product in india these days is haldi where you even see haldi added to protein powders and protein shakes so that is one move where we saw healthy products flying off the shelf coconut juice people are buying more coconut juice uh, which is packaged instead of fresh coconuts so considering it as a health healthy drink and so yeah in the health segment we have seen some uptick but no overall i would say that the pattern is back to normal people are consuming based on what they think they need and not just based on panic that's interesting actually i'd just like to add something of it like you mentioned that diwali you've seen a little bit of difference in the the profile and you know how health food is coming during this diwali obviously this is a very festive time so gifting is a big thing and that's one of the things we do as well over here right so we have seen like we have corporate gifting as one of our say arms uh we have seen like a lot of corporate maybe it's because of you know the no touch nature of say digital gifting but we've seen a lot of our corporates opt in for you know e gifting or e vouchers rather than going for these physical small gifts where we had like a huge catalog humongous catalog of say specialized items like novelty items instead of that they've all opted in for these e gift cards different brands are available so i i see that shift and see to be honest uh, i think that itself is looking at uh, we are, we are seeing a tremendous change in terms of you know going from physical gift cards used to be earlier the norm now it's moving to an online space and e e gifting in the us if you just go down any of these stores say walmart stores uh, just before checkout you'll find a number of gift cards you know of apple and walmart themselves uh, so netflix sometimes these are physical gift cards but uh, in spite of seeing all of that you used to see a big uh, the market over there was close to like you know a trillion dollars worth of e gifting right similarly over here india's market is still nascent in a way but i think this period has kind of uh, pushed a lot of people to adapt this e gifting obviously the touch nature of gifts has gone but i guess it has made it safer and also i think it gives option to when you are gifting consumer to, yeah it gives option to whatever they want to... rather than so you yeah. know yeah absolutely yeah okay so another question yeah so another question that we have is uh, uh, in terms of handling of uh, goods and materials has has there been intervention of technology which uh, which we should know about so basically uh, i think talking about warehouse or wherever you so have you seen that you have deployed more uh, technology there in terms of sorting or maybe physical carrying or something i don't know akshay sure so i think one of the biggest challenges is uh, when we are transporting goods it's visibility for our customers right uh, companies uh, large enterprises for example i'll just give an example we are working with one of the largest you know aluminum mines over here in the country and for them visibility or transparency of any of the uh, pr to po and then post shipment uh, the trackability of that has been a challenge so one of the things that 
is coming up is obviously making this entire journey transparent with uh, notifications, geofencing it in a way that enables uh, the transporters who run the, uh, who have uh, your truck drivers running trucks between certain lanes. They know that those lanes are within the, within the geofence location. And at the same time, the ones who are like taking, uh, you know, or the consignee, ultimate consignee can, can know when the goods is about to arrive into its uh, premises and so on. So these are some of the new things that uh, people are looking at. Uh, Shekhi ourselves have, have integrated uh, with such, you know, uh, solutions through APIs, such that it's visible for our uh, enterprise customers on their, on their enterprise portals. So any particular order, you can see the status and, you know, where exactly it's coming. Not just that, it gives you automated notifications whenever there's an, which is an advanced shipment notice, whenever there's a advanced notice uh, or a shipment that's coming into the premises. And uh, I think in this space, there are a lot of supply chain startups. There are a lot of supply chain startups who are basically solving for just this particular problem statement, which is how do you uh, empower the transporters or the logistic players, logistic uh, service providers, sometimes uh, who are like, they probably are uh, run by owners who have two, two, three trucks. They don't have a massive fleet, but at the same time, they're not savvy enough and have not come on board any technology platform so far. How do you enable them also, uh, given that a, say a large enterprise or large FMCG player like Palmer or, or Colgate, they have been using them because they have these vendors for like years, 10 years, decades long. How do you bring them also onto the bandwagon? So it's become like, you know, providing them with these apps or these small technologies, which enable both the transporter or the vendor to get onto this, provide the visibility to the customer. So the cust so that, that the entire way of going about it is they land the customer, then ask all those vendors to get onboarded so that it helps the customer. So these small, you know, micro innovations have itself seen a huge, you know, interest, uh, even from VCs and uh, I believe that, you know, as a supply chain process, that's one that has a lot of problem areas. So a lot of value add can come in from there. Okay, okay. We just have a minute or so to uh, finish. So before we wrap up, Samar, can you also, you know, enlighten us with, uh, you know, the kind of uh, technological interventions in terms of maybe moving up uh, products or anything that you have seen, or in terms of, uh, you know, sorting products or storing that uh, that that you have introduced uh, 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 post the pandemic. See, see, operations is a business of moving <clears throat> molecules, right? We are not moving just bits and bytes. That is one piece of supply chain, moving communication, connecting people, moving the bits and bytes. But when you need to move molecules, there is very little you can do about people interaction, right? So there is a need for people to work in a warehouse. There is a need for somebody to drive the vehicle, make the delivery happen. But the biggest impact we saw on, on this operational aspect was of making zero errors. So if you make a system which has no errors from beginning till end, that is what reduces the interaction the most. So it's very important that the Six Sigma processes are followed in an operations business so that you reduce need for interaction of a retailer to come close to the delivery boy and ask him a few questions. If the products you have put in a box and delivered the box are always correct, that trust builds. People just take the box, keep it aside, open it up later on. They don't need to then complain that something was missing or something was wrong. So having a zero error process is the biggest thing that we have focused on over the last 12 months so that there is least human intervention needed at the time of delivery. Obviously, there are some very simple things in place like mobile payments, which reduce the interaction and uh, e-invoicing, which reduce the need for paper exchange further. But e-invoicing and mobile payments is across the board. In particularly our operations, we have focused on having zero errors <coughs> from beginning till end. And that has reduced the human interaction the most. 
gentlemen we have a short uh, short beyond our time uh, given time but thank you so much for joining us and it was very uh, um, uh, I, i would like to thank actually all the b2b players to, to help the kirana stores which kept us uh, you know uh, kept us very happy when we were locked up everything was available so i think and there is a huge opportunity which i see again opening up in terms of you know supply chain and everything getting restored so uh, i'll hope i'll hope to see you all again sometime and thank you for today thank you sarup thank you for thank you 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 th